Office space, as you said, has always been a large part of your portfolio. Is the nature of office space changing? For example, we hear that space per worker is declining, tenants demand different layouts than they used to. Uh, what are you seeing happening in your properties? How important are the changes? And how are you adjusting? What are the implications for landlords and what are the implications for investors? And do you expect the changes in office space to be permanent or is this just a transitory thing? Well, let's start with the fact that the average age of a New York City office building is 75 years old. And uh, what does that mean? It means that uh, tenants who are looking for new space uh, who want all the, you know, the benefits of high-tech uh, office um, living, whether that's uh, backup power generation, um, fresh air intake, uh, floor-to-ceiling glass, um, you know, those are sort of some of the big ones. But then you've got uh, a major issue, which, which we call densification, uh, which you were alluding to. Many of the, uh, uh, let, let's start in 2000, the year 2000, I would say, uh, we were at 300 square feet per employee. Uh, by 2010, that number was more like 200 square feet per employee. And today, 2015, we're probably at 175 square feet per employee. Um, and so you've got tenants that are, or employers that are pushing more people into the same space. Um, or they're downsizing and taking less space and putting the same people into that space. Either way, uh, this is taxing to the buildings. Um, so we've been criticized for why are we building new space in Manhattan? Manhattan doesn't need new office space. Well, in order to compete in the global world, because uh, take a company like, I don't know, let's pick Arthur Anderson. They've got people in Shanghai, they've got people in London, they've got people in Hong Kong, and they're New York people when they go to visit the satellite offices, they go to see these offices and they say, wow, why is my cohorts, why is my colleague's space in London so much better than my space in New York? Because they're in a 1940s building that has columns every six feet, and you know it's very inefficient space. Um, so what we've been doing is building brand new space, column-free, floor-to-ceiling glass, uh, where you can actually fit more people on the floor. Uh, but the, the the best example of this is look at the Bloomberg building. The Bloomberg building is probably the most densely used building in New York City. It's got 110 square feet per employee. The building was only built 10 years ago. Uh, it was built in 2005, and there are lines for the elevators. There are lines for the bathrooms. The HVA system, system has trouble keeping up with the population on each of the floors. Um, we built uh, seven World Trade Center, opened it in 2006, uh, took this density issue into account. And everything that's being done at, at the World Trade Center now, so one, two, three, and four World Trade Center, everything that's being done in Hudson Yards, 425 Park, one Vanderbilt, the, the new breed of, of office buildings, all takes this density into account. Uh, so no matter where you're going in the city, if you want a new office building, office space, you can find it. But to compete with the world's uh, other office buildings, you know, we need to build new space in New York. What's interesting is that over the last 20 years, <clears throat> New York has replaced 7% of its space with new space. So 7% of 400 million square feet. When you compare that to London, that number is 34%. When you compare it to Hong Kong, it's 50%. So 50% of the space in Hong Kong has been built over the last 20 years, where in New York it's only 7%. Add to that the fact that our, our obsolete buildings are now being converted to residential or hotel or other uses, we have a shrinking office stock. And so at the World Trade Center, we built 11 million square feet of new office space, but we really just replaced the old World Trade Center. Um, but that space is sorely needed. Uh, the Hudson Yards area, which uh, Related is doing a fantastic job on, and Brookfield is doing a fantastic job on, um, it's getting leased and it's getting purchased because it's a, there's a need for it. Um, <clears throat> it's not just the densification, but it's the, uh, you know, it's the ability to um, create brand new high-tech space. And uh, the way these companies are using them have changed also. So we built, we designed two, three, and four World Trade Center um, under this new regime, but two and three World Trade Center had very large floor plates at the base. The bottom five or six floors in each building were 70 plus thousand square foot floor plates uh, to take, take into account the financial services firms that might want trading firms there. What's interesting is that the TAMI sector came in and sucked up those floors. So in three World Trade Center, which we're under construction with, it's a two and a half million square foot building, but the bottom five floors are huge trading floors. Group M, which is the division of WPP, the largest uh, advertising agency in the world, signed a 515,000 square foot lease with us a couple of years ago, and we'll be moving into that space, and they're using all those floors for their advertising agencies. Um, Fox 
and News Corp will be leasing the base of our two World Trade Center if we sign a lease with them hopefully next month. And um, they're taking those large floor plates at the base for their newsrooms, for their studios, for their, <coughs> for their uh, um, other facilities. But it's, <coughs> it's indicative of how tenants are using space differently. So uh, when you spoke about densification, you said that we were down to about 175 square feet per uh, employee, um, possibly going lower. Um, do you think this is the new U.S., you know, new American world order is going to be half the space per employee as it was 15 years ago? Right. Well, you don't want to get too far down because then the collaboration becomes more of an annoyance. You get too close to people and you can't be productive. And it really depends on the firm. So law firms are not going to go into a bullpen because of the nature of law firms. But guess what? Law firms don't need all that filing room space anymore. And they don't need those big libraries anymore because everything is digital. So they can get into a more dense space, but they can still have their offices for their for their partners and the associates can have smaller workstations, but they don't have to be on top of each other like a trading floor. Uh, so I think it depends industry by industry, but it's interesting to see that the TAMI industry, because it's so collaborative, uh, how they're just taking to this new space.